So hello everybody, today I have a pleasure of being here with Rihanna Steen. She's a professor, an associate professor in the Norwegian uh, Business School. And she wrote a paper that really caught my attention and it's combining and bringing the safety tool concepts into the security. That is uh, usually something that is in charge of our, our professional roles. So usually safety professionals, they, they take care of uh, environmental safety uh, training and also security. So Rihanna, congratulations for your paper, it's awesome. I really appreciate it. And I want you please to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about how you came to this, how you decided to combine the safety two concepts into the, the security field. Thank you. Uh, let me first thank you for giving me this opportunity to contribute to your channel and chance share my idea about combining security and safety two perspective which i really like to talk about uh, i'm associate professor at bi norwegian business school and university of stavanger as well where i lecture a course which is decision making in crisis i do research about resilience engineering and uh, resilience engineering in organizational level Recently, I have done lots of research on uh, applying resilience engineering in crisis management as well. One paper is now being published, uh, publishing as I accepted yesterday for uh, Corona, what we have now and how is, are we resilient or not? Why not? So it's, um, it's quite big, big uh, concept. It's quite uh, valuable concept. Then I just thought perhaps I can use it as well in security context. The course uh, security management that I'm lecturing in at university at BI Norwegian Business School. Uh, that was a very, very long introduction about me, but you asked me about how I came by this idea about the paper you named uh, application. Uh, application of safety two concept in, in security context. Um, well, where can I start? Uh, let me start with a simple explanation that there are many researchers in the security context that uh, who they believe the safety concepts are not capable, are not sufficient enough to capture all aspects in the security context. Uh, the argumentation or um, there are many argumentation. Uh, some of them sounds uh, quite logical. For instance, in safety management, we are uh, relying much on historical data uh, where we use a statistical model, estimation model, and those are source of data we do not have uh, in a security context. Think about, uh, for example, a terror attack or something that insider trading or something in security. We do not have those uh, data to, so it's one thing that make those concepts quite different. And the methods as well in the security and um, Safety management are different, where the safety management is much more technical, much more mathematical, statistical, but in security is much more qualitative. So there is some argument, but in the last decade, we have had a lot of improvement in the safety board. One is for instance, safety two concept <laughs> and resilience engineering as well, which now have opened door to more, many different source of analysis, qualitative one that we can use and might enhance the ability of organization to be more secure. So the idea was how could I find a link between security and safety? 
and how this link can be developed and we can have some sort of unified approach. Why not? And uh, what is missing? Then I try to understand the security. I find out that this is three things that we can find in distinguish um, three elements that distinguish these, these two fields. The first is the concept, the conceptual one. How you define risk. How you define risk is so very important. As uh, one researcher says that the way you define things will affect the way you manage it. So it's so important we have some sort of understanding the building block is the concept, how we define risk in those two different, if, it, if they are so different, I'm not really sure now, uh, field. So I started to uh, do research on the conceptual one, which is how risk is defined in safety, how risk is defined in the security, and what is missing here and how we can have a unified between those two. This is one. And the second one was uh, the threat source or threat agent, which in safety or usually often inside the organization is about the accident, is about the technology, is about something that's happening inside. So in some sort, somehow is traceable. But in the security, the source is outside, often outside. They could be a, an employee in the organization, but uh, often is outside the organization, hacker, for instance. Then we have different, it is not traceable. So it's different in the source of uh, the agent, uh, trade agent, or source of the risk. So the concept is different, how they de define. The source is different, and then the third thing is um, the risk assessment approaches. The models they use is different. So because they are so different, then the researchers have decided that they are so completely different world. So we work for ourselves and they work for themselves, those different. But as you mentioned, it's not necessarily like that. A guy who is in charge with the safety is uh, often in charge with security. If you are not in a very big organization that is very different department for safety and the security separate, uh, in usual organization, the security safety is goes together. And in our daily life as well, safety, security, it goes together. And when we are talking with people who are not academic, we do not have those storm of those problems that we have with terms and terminology, they use safety security exchangeable. So it's something here, something we need to work with. Is it possible to have a unified approach? That was what I started to work with. That. Perfect. And and one of the things that I really enjoyed is that you you kind of define it really well the the safety one concepts that was not uh, too possible to be linked and now with the safety two concepts it's pretty much uh, almost the, the same approach uh, the pillars are, are kind of different somehow because in in the security we consider the value uh, of things and, and also the the threat as you mentioned also uh, vulnerability uh, but it can be also found on, on the safety field. So could you describe the, the, these three pillars uh, to that folks that are not familiar with the security uh, road, let's put like that. Uh, yes. And also uh, something that is, the people ask me about why it should be linked. And I usually say that if you have a threat from outside, it can damage the health or the integrity of internal people as well. So that's, if it's not enough, so I don't know what would be. <laughs> uh, one time, many, many years ago, many years, I mean, more than our ages, 2,500 years ago, like that, <laughs> many years ago, 
Sun Tzu, he, he, who was a um, Chinese, Chinese, Chinese is a scientist and a strategist, talk about war, the art of war. And he talked about the importance of creativity, adjustment, changing the plan, and be open. 2,500 years ago, he talked about the war and the art of war is in creativity and finding the new way when facing the new challenges. See, we are talking about the same issue. We are talking about the protecting. So what is the issue of both safety and security address? Protecting something we value. What we value could be our health, our economy, our organization, our information, our identity, or our systems. We protect them, and I, we want to protect them, but we need, we need to protect them. So let us go back in 1825, 1850. That time, that was not so many technology, that was so many advanced, uh, certainly that was no digital world, and everything was so simple. Then that was not talking about safety, security, that was protecting. So safety, security was combined terms. And that was a need, this is the need of a human being, a baby born need to be safe and secure in her mother's or his mother's arms. So it is, it is so natural to talk those terms together. But the life get complicated. We developed and we are still developing platforms, technology, and you name it. God knows what will happen to technology in the next 20 years is some crazy one, I'm sure. But we are, we are now very complicated. So we cannot you know, separate. When technology started to work and develop, that was like, okay, this is the structure. You need to run this machine in this way. This machine should work like that. Engineer should work like this and that. That is the HSE. This is the safety. Because the incident and accident happens if people doesn't follow the instruction. It's something there. And it's developed and developed and developed. And we have a lots of very good safety measure. We have methods from Bowtie and to STAM, and we have many, very many good measures. But now we have come to the third age. We have come to the third age, which is you cannot separate people and technology. People are technology together. We are a system, Techno technical system, social technical system, and so complicated, so connected that the threat which comes from the people can have some safety consequence. Is why it makes sense to talk with, with each other in the same property. However, there is some differences and we acknowledge it, but not that different that we need two very different fields. Is they are like Sister and brothers, not two quite different families. They are in the same family, but <laughs> they're cousins. <laughs> so, Hiana, uh... and the pillars. You asked me about the pillars the definition. Yes. Well, let me. If you go from the safety, from the safety perspective, it's like risk is defined many, many different ways. We have both from a researcher in Stavanger's misconception of risk. There are many, 20 more than, uh, different definition of risk. Uh, but the classic one is like combination of some probability and consequences, or combination of likelihood and consequences. More modern definition of risk has combined the uncertainty and take away the probability because the probability is not like objective probability. We cannot find that. It's almost impossible, almost. So we use subjective probability to express the uncertainty. 
about something happened and if it happened, what could be of consequences. This is what is the safety about. So something with uh, consequences and likelihood and uncertainty there. And then come, we come to the concept of security. Then we have those three pillars. Those three pillars are, uh, let's call it just, those three, three pillars are threat, something threat that threat is something uh, like risk source. You have also value, something that you care and is the subject to protection value. It could be anything from our life and belongs and to the information organization and anything that you value. It means you care, subject to protection. And the third pillar is vulnerability. And then we have these three factor models, threat and vulnerability and value. One researcher questioned it from the Cypher's safety board. Where is the uncertainty here? If you accept that. And that was triggered. And I said, mm, this is a very indeed good question. Let me write a paper. And I tried to incorporate uncertainty in definition of uh, risk insecurity. Then I have the, this new one. So I tried to com combine it somehow. Yeah, then, and for sure, uncertainty needs to be included in any kind of management such a technical system because it's the core of the, the relationship between um, machine and, and people. And I, I saw that you mentioned the, the black swan term in your, in your paper and I really big, I'm a really big fan of Nassim Taleb. And that's the question is coming from, from this. Uh, how do you think is, is the best way of uh, managing throughout uncertainty or, or trying to, to be more accurate to take decisions in the, the uncertainty world. Uh, I saw that you, you are familiar with the FRAN methodology from uh, your neighbor, <laughs> Eric Honegel. Yes. And do you think this is the best tool? Do you think uh, we have another uh, best options? So talk a little bit to us about it, how to, to be more secure, if you can say this, in the uncertainty? Um, dealing with uncertainty is one of the goals of risk assessment. Either you are in the security field or you are in the safety field. You want to deal with uncertainty and you want to understand those elements and you want to have measure to face them. To reduce them, to control them. So when we come back, we, we, when, we, when we are in the context of security, we do not have much information to build our model. Model are abstract of the world. The point is, we do not have those world. We don't know the we don't know the underlying assumption because it's the intention. What is the intention? This is outside. We don't know much about the possibility. We know what we do in organization. We know about our coping capabilities. We know that these systems we have, these firewalls we have, this source of passwords we have, we protect in that level. But a lot of uncertainty because we do not know outsider how they will attack or belongings and our values. So it's a very, very high uncertainty in the security world and the system is not traceable because there are lots of things goes outside the domain of organization. And those things make the uncertainty very, very big issue in context of security. And it's why these three factor models really lack the focus on uncertainty. We need to have it because is, is a big part of risk. There is that uncertainty. Back to your question, how we deal with that? Well, we do our best. <laughs> but, <laughs> we use this safety to resilience engineering method, 
which highlights the importance of anticipation, okay? Let us focus on anticipation. Highlights the importance of monitoring. Let us have monitoring system. The diversity in monitoring system. Let us have reporting system. Let us have communication in our system, sharing information, everything we can and everything we are allowed to do. We, perhaps we can do more, but we are not allowed to do because our roles, our norms, our strategies, we cannot just check every email. It could give us some good information about the people, but we are not allowed to do that. So we have our source of limitation, restriction, or ability and needs. So there should be some source of balance, but monitoring highlights this one. So you have the monitoring aspect, you have the anticipation, and you have proactive response. And here is a lots of about strategy formation that you have the leadership to promote resources, willingness to allocate resources to those measures that increase ability to monitor. But it, it costs money, it needs prioritizing, but the leadership should decide about that. So goes through the path of resilience engineering and thinking about learning, Lots of learning issue, focus on learning issue when we are dealing with uncertainty. It's not learning just what we learned from the before, from the accident and investigation reports. We can learn a lot about our daily activities, what we do, because we do a lot of things, lots of things. We do lots of varieties in our daily life uh, that is not according to our uh, description, job description. So how we manage? Let us they gather them and share them. So resilience engineering give us some sort of perspective, some, uh, some sort of roadmap from the managerial points of view to combine with the other safety measure, of course. So those together give us a possibility to deal with things better. I want to be very precise here. We are not talking about taking away those safety one, the classic one, and building on safety two. What we are talking about is putting on complementary. We just have more. We need to have more, not less. We would have those safety measures, everything now and everything which will come in the future, but also from the safety too, which is the focus on learning from every day, learning from those positive things we do. And together, we increase our capacity to deal. Back to your question, what about the uncertainty? Well, you cannot deal with everything. We do not know everything. And it is not realistic to think that the themes, the measure or method give us some sort of possibility. It's just not possible because the world is in turbulent changes and we do not know what's happening outside. There is no possibility to have accurate risk estimation. Forget about accurate, but you can have a good picture, risk picture. The point is when you work with your system to produce a good risk picture, which highlights the uncertainty elements as much as you can, how deep you can, but you have also resilient inside the organization that make you able to tackle, to tolerate, be flexible and bounce back. Together, together make an organization more capable to deal with the challenges and uncertainties. So it's about the focus. What is the focus? Is it like just using those standards and risk management standards or something about uh, risk and vulnerability, those lists of defined threats and just be focused on them and build blind about everything else? Then you are very passive. It's not enough, it's not enough. You need to have them, but you need to acknowledge that this is just an, a, a starting point. You need to increase your ability to improvise. 
to interpret, to get the information and process them is the cognitive thing. Organization need to develop cognitive skills for all of their employees is what I learned in the last years. Perfect. So uh, one of the, the links that I made during the, the reading of your paper was that security has uh, something that is really similar in safety. We measure, at least we use it to measure uh, the absence of events as success. So if nothing happens, uh, we understand or we tend to, to understand that it's okay. So, and we don't measure the, the things that goes right, if you will. So that's something that we, we need to work with and work on to kind of show that if something is happening, we can capture this and, and learn as you, as you mentioned. And I wanna ask you about uh, if you can share with us any practical examples of companies or, or experience that you, you know that has been uh, succeed in this task of being resilient in, in the security field combined with safety too or or something that some practical, practical examples <laughs> if i name organization then i have marketing here and it's not but <laughs> no, you don't need to name the, the name just just the, the situation i understand um this year I have a sabbatical uh, permission from BI Business BI Norwegian Business School to do research. I'm here in that university, but I'm not teaching now in this year for BI. Um, then I use this year as a, in a company. It's a, like um, risk management is somehow or what can I say, contingency in the second line company, which is uh, very big for many other oil service companies or production companies who use this company, OFFB, as a, a second line emergency response organization. I started uh, very early this year, I think that was the second week in January, before everything goes very very in wrong direction with corona and these things and i started to talk about safety to our resilience and i asked permission to do research and that was very positive and i did it uh, since i've been with their meetings the way they manage uh, with other me members and i can say that there are a lots of good examples there and I see how much the organization value the learning aspect, how much organization value the anticipation aspect, and how much the door is open and they want just to absorb new knowledge and system methods. You mentioned from uh, somewhere with Ricardo and the other uh, researchers, we have managed to model whole emergency response operation more than i don't know 60 70 functions for the same so it's uh, a lots of things going on and uh, i will say that people in uh, organization they just need to know more the door is open and people understand the need to change to have a little model because you need to understand what are you doing it's what the safety too is about you you should know what are you doing what is this function and why you function is so well what's happening what is happening why not just but not just focus on that and learn from them and combine with learning from incident and accident and thank you god is not so many so we do not have so much opportunity there to learn but every day is so much to learn so combine those so we have very, uh, very good uh, context to build on. Perfect. So the time is flying. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank you for, for your time and for your knowledge sharing with us. It, it, it was awesome. And the first time we, we were able to talk to a, a security specialist, if, if I can say, because it's not 
to common have uh, kind of this expertise in, in the field, at least not here. Uh, and I want to thank you and, and let the, you uh, mention what you are doing now, your, your projects, and if you want to comment about your experience in, in TED Talks, that is a dream for me as well. Uh, so feel free, marketing time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, TED Talk, yes. Uh, that was so very special. That was so challenging. I received 10 minutes to talk about 10 years of my research in a very simple way that I don't use the term that is very scientific. It should be so simple as everybody can understand. And it should be not more than 10 minutes and it should be worth to sharing. You just think about and I sitting and thinking, okay, it is good start, how could I? So I used that boxing analogy to, to take the resilience because that was about the changes, that was about the threat, that was about proactive response, that was a lot of things going on that give us understanding that we are, we are in that boxing ring and in a boxing ring then we face challenges and we need to act fast. We need to monitor, we need to take with us everything is goes and have mind open to receive information from coaches or anybody who gives us information, build on that and make our next move. So TED was a very nice, very nice experience and uh, difficult to get there in form of what I wanted to say to them in a simple word, but uh, I hope people receive something that they can think about further when they face challenges and at least uh, some sort of curiosity of learning about the resilience is value in itself. Perfect. So thank you, Rihanna. I hope to see you someday in, in person over there. <laughs> thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.